Um, the first item on the agenda was actually the second item was the Meadowbrook, Meadowbrook Golf Club review application, but the applicant has requested a continuance. Respectfully request that you continue this matter to your next regularly scheduled meeting in September of 2018. So if you're here for that, uh, that won't be going until our next meeting in September. That's Which is the, the 17th. Uh, Meadowbrook Golf Club uh, application. So we get a motion to continue this to September 17th, you said? Yep. We can do 730. Move the, the CPDC continue the uh, site plan uh, review for the Meadowbrook Golf Club uh, project at um, 292 or 280 Grove Street until Monday, September 17th. Did you want to do 7:30? That's right. At 7:30. So second. Second. So next up is uh, Johnson Woods Minor Amendment, PUD Special Plan. Or do we want? I think we can get started. And Mr. Chairman, as always, I repeat myself from this one. Okay. Do we have enough votes for that then? Uh, well, we have. Tony has to recuse himself from this. So you're a board of five official voting members and one alternate, so three is a quorum. Okay. But the this is a public hearing? It's not. It's, it's a not. minor amendment. Okay. Yeah. Different rules. <laughs> it's a it's a minor amendment. You allow three votes for the um, I believe so, yes. I mean, change to a special I'd, I'll defer to, to the attorney on that. I mean, we didn't notice it as a public hearing, so I didn't know if that would I appreciate make that. I, I, just, I have some concern. Is, uh, is there, do you have five members? Uh, now? Yeah, five members. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, can I confer with. Uh, sure. Okay. Do you not want to discuss anything and just not do a vote or something? There's one like item that? on the agenda, and that, that relates to Building 52. So yeah. we so we have that continued. We have a sufficient problem to Okay. We have a motion. Is that the same meeting, September 17th? Yes. Yeah, and let's mm -hmm. but let's schedule it for like 8:30. So 8.30 on the 17th. 8.30 on September 17th. Move that the CPDC uh, continue the discussion for the minor amendment to uh, Johnson Woods until Monday, September 17th at 8.30, did you say? Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Robert. Second. All in favor? Let's get a light night. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so surprisingly, we can stick around and discuss zoning. Sorry. Yeah. 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 So we, we can't even vote on that uh, striping, the uh, parking striping? They already did that. Yeah, did that. Uh, so why was there a site plan decision? There don't seem to be two site plan decisions in there. So one decision was for the foundation and one... Yeah. Both minor amendments to the special permit. Okay. I didn't, we didn't do amendments in Concord like that. So I didn't, I thought that we didn't... Um, I mean, I defer to Brad, of course, but... Something you want to change? For, no, just for a minor amendment. I wasn't sure. It was no, super is it something do you want to change? Do you want to bring that kind of a thing to town meeting and discuss? No, no, that would be a, it's a state statute, okay. presumably. But you said you didn't do that in common. No, we didn't do minor minor amendments. Minor amendments. Yeah, we did special permits, not minor amendments to them. Okay. So. 
not something I have. <laughs> Um, well, all the fun, went, all the air went out of me. Sure. Are you here for something specific? May I just give you a letter? Sure. Of course. Congratulations. Thank you. I've made a couple of comments, and I think it's stable to get with all the confusion at Johnson Woods. Okay. Just add. So this is for Johnson Woods? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure. Uh, thank you. Um, why don't what we can do is we can scan this and email it to you guys tomorrow because you, know, you just have two copies. Just two copies. Yeah, so we'll just we'll put it into the record and we'll, we'll email it to the board tomorrow so they can all have it. That's okay. Right. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks. you. Have a good day. Oh. Okay. Thanks for mm -hmm. Have a good day. Okay. Well, that'll give me time to go out to the site and see what's going on. There's a lot going on. Well, Johnson yeah. Woods. <laughs> Johnson, Johnson Woods has been complicated and uh, on the on the agenda many many times. Shall we say? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some of it is very frustrating because it seems to go beyond what this board's charter is. Right? You just sort of personal <laughs> and civil <laughs> issues and it's about person. I guess we're trying to try oh, to this isn't the first time this is going to come yeah. up. Oh no. I mean, it won't, I, rather it won't be the last. It's Looking at the layout of everything, yeah. right. uh, there are other things that are going to be just as complicated and I sight good. lines and yeah, trees yeah, are going to get moved down in order to just build surprise it how this night so, is going to like, go home sooner than I thought. We've been doing that for, I don't know, a couple yeah, of years now. Yeah, that's fine. Do you need me to sign in? If you don't mind, please. Hello? Well, you can't get credit for being here unless you sit down and actually talk about something. <laughs> you want me to talk? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Give us a pep talk. I think you guys are doing a terrific job. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> Juggling all the balls in the air. <laughs> Helping grow the town while at the same time keeping it as we call it. It's, it's growing despite us, I'm afraid. Can we help you gentlemen with something? Early, late, 7.30? Late. Johnson Woods. For uh, Middlebrook. Continued till September 17th. Um, so oh, okay. Yes, it continues, so. Okay. No, sorry to interrupt. No, no problem. problem. Have a good day. Public meeting. There's a lot of cars in the parking lot, but nobody here. <laughs> <laughs> well, there were. They all just left. Yeah. 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 So there was a full, like a, a full gang. House. Oh yeah, yeah there's a full <laughs> for both for the Johnson Woods thing Johnson too. Johnson Woods. Some of the, the Meadowbrook neighborhood, I think, mostly new. Kind of new, yeah. But there's a few. Because we here. got that word like a few hours ago. The Johnson Woods one just happened. Oh okay. Yeah. So they just weren't ready, or they? Weren't no, they were, but we didn't have a quorum. We had. Well, because of their. Well, their legal eagle decided that we needed a uh, four-person vote, and the, the associate member associate member has to recuse, recuse himself from this particular issue. On on uh, Meadowbrook? Yes. Johnson, no, no, no. Johnson Woods. Johnson, Johnson, Johnson Woods. Woods. My boss is actually in the butter. Um, so you still have three. Yeah. Right. Yeah, didn't didn't satisfy their requirements. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. Right. Yeah, for they, a special permit, they need for a super majority to vote. Um, yeah. So. so it's gone beyond the minor amendment to the. You'll have to talk to the attorneys on that one because I wasn't sure of that myself. Yeah. But. Okay. Okay. So I guess we have time to spend here on some 40 yard. So, would you like to start with? Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, I saw that there was a memo from Jean, and then it looks like she took the some of the other guidelines that we've been referencing and created this guiding principles document. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think her thought was that if we can incorporate them into the guiding principles, they can kind of run throughout the whole document and be used that way and enforced through the guiding principles that a lot of the stuff that we kind of want to do. Um, so just have as an overarching kind of sense of what the town wants instead of individual sections or just a good, good way of handling that. Yeah, I think so. The other was a little thorny. I right. 
I understand. Do you think that, I'm, I'm just rethinking this whole night now that everything's changed. Do you think you should take care of other business and try to get as close to 8.30 as possible in case some of the public wants to come talk about design guidelines? Sure. I don't know if like John Barnes was planning on attending. Mm -hmm. um, That's fine. Yeah, I was just thinking that it, okay, since sure. it's scheduled for 8.30, it might be more fair if we try to get at least closer to 8.30. Not that I want to stay here all night, but... Um, well, we've got, what, the meeting schedule for next year? Yeah, and then some minutes. Minutes. Is this a thing now where we're just going to do the one meeting a month? Does that seem to That's be what we were thinking. Um, and then you can always schedule additional meetings if needed. So if, if we start to get a lot of applications or just scheduling gets difficult, um, or you know, state statutes dictate certain time frames that the applicants want to stick to. Um, the applicants this year have been pretty amenable to it. Like they've known up front the schedule and they've been willing to work with it. Mm, so the um, screen behind you is flickering. It's really annoying because I have to look at you. <laughs> I'll just stop talking. You're in the movies here. <laughs> Sorry. Because you're in your ball by This now. meeting's just not meant to happen, I don't think. No. Okay. okay, so um, um, I wondered on the schedule if we happen to have or come up with um, something for that's we got to get ready for town meeting. Does this schedule give give us the right um, opportunities for drafting and review? So, yeah, if something is um, getting ready to go in the morning, we could add additional meetings, or we could create like a working group. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll figure out a way to make it work, and we can talk about that in advance. Um, You're thinking April town meeting? Or? Well, only because April town meeting is the twenty second, and the right. last meeting, the only meeting scheduled is the eighth which is two weeks. Usually in April, that's the way it is, though, because of town meeting. And so the warrant would be closed in February anyway. Okay. All right, okay. so really it's a January. Yeah, and we January need, might need a second meeting in January if we've got something aimed for the warrant. Yeah. Right. Okay. You guys met twice a month a lot this year because of all the volume. <coughs> At the beginning of the year. At the Typically beginning of the year, twice a month yes. up until, yeah, but. April, yeah. up until April. Yeah, so. Yeah. January, February, March, we had two meetings each. So then the same thing for November town meeting. That one's actually closer because we get to the fourth if something, some last minute change came up. Right. But that warrant closes in September? Yep. Hmm. The end of September or early? Uh, usually like the second or third week, I think. Okay. So do we need to approve or? No. I just wanted you to just run it by you and see if you're good. Yeah. Now, normally, it was the first and third of the month. Now it looks like you're meeting the second week of the, the month. Uh, I've heard of you since you always attended these meetings before I worked here, but I don't remember <coughs> that. I believe our website says second and fourth weeks of the month. Okay, I thought it was first and third. When I when we went to one meeting per month last this year, I mm -hmm. like, didn't change what we had been doing since I worked here. But okay. But I mean, I, yeah. I have no problem with the schedule. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Make sure you change the website word in that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. You know, I mean, and also, since we have plenty of room on the page now, you might want to mention the. Um, Reading Television, RCTV uh, opportunity. What's that? They can watch it on TV. Oh. You always could. Hmm? You always could. Of course, so we always did. But it's not on the page that people might look at. Oh. Uh, Do 
Do the recorded meetings get posted? No, but they're on the RCTV like YouTube site. There. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of times they're live, too. They're old. Almost always. I don't know how they are right now because I haven't been at home to watch one. <laughs> In the past, you couldn't hear anything and you certainly couldn't hear me speaking. So yeah. I'm hoping that the audio well, the YouTube video is pretty clear. <coughs> it is usually, yeah. Okay. Are these active? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A little green light says somebody's listening. <laughs> yeah, green light's on. They're for RCTV. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't amplify in the room. No. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we might. Yeah. We may want to do that because there are a number of people being here at the meetings and they couldn't hear us. That's true. Acoustics are so tricky that it, we'd probably get some weird feedback if we started amplifying it. We're better off putting something behind us that projects the sound, like some material that helps it move that way. Or you could just speak louder. <laughs> well, uh, the other question is whether we um, might ask for a, a microphone that the public could use. We talked about that on our uh, for the select one too, just similar to what they had when you know, the school committee. Like, you know, they go to the school committee, there's a table in the middle, and there's a microphone. Like, right. They come up and they don't, they don't have to sit in the chairs here, but it's there for the audience and for RCTV. But we yeah, do we have the 40 Bs, I'm pretty sure. Give them a microphone to mm -hmm. talk into you. Right. But I believe this room is wired. I want to say there are mics in the ceiling. I believe so, too. I don't see any. Unless they're in the speaker. It's like they took something out. Any speaker. I don't see any well, we have the, the cameras. I don't know if the cameras probably have a microphone. Okay. That's enough technical <laughs> microphones. <laughs> okay. Do you want to do um, master planning or do you want to do minutes? Let's we can get some minutes out of the Get way. the minutes out of the way. Nice. Yeah. I haven't looked at any of them. Usually I get a chance to review them before. Did you bring the ones you from? Bring. I don't know. How many was it? May, June, and July? May, June, and July, yeah. I can put them on this screen if it's not. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. It feels like it was a long time ago. <laughs> Seven, six, eleven, and seven, nine. So I'm only responsible for this one, right? You can actually technically vote on minutes, but you weren't. Mm -hmm. Thanks all meetings <laughs> <laughs> Right? If anybody's missing a set, let me know. What are we, which ones? 5-11, uh, 5-7, 6 and 7-9. Yeah, I don't have 5-7 or 6-11. Right. Um, yeah. I reviewed them and found that the first one. I'll do the first first, and then we'll see. I just feel bad if we had the whole conversation about it. You want one with some of our comments and edits because we have a word doc that we print right here that has some of the ideas we've thrown out on the process. Maybe I didn't attend. And I can print that for you. Yes, yeah. I'd like to follow this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think that's before you came on. Yeah. Oh, it, was, it definitely is before I came on, but it was one of the few meetings I didn't attend last year. Does anyone need an extra set of minutes while I'm going to print? We're going to um, share these We'll share. We'll be able to switch them okay. around. Yeah. Okay. Conserve the paper. <laughs>
Seb.
Okay. Is everybody all set with May 7th, 2018 minutes? There's one comment on this copy that I have. This year's pen. Mm -hmm. uh, the only issue I have is the PDF version. I've got some some weird stuff at the bottom of my copy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, reinstall Adobe on right. their computer. Right. Yeah. Doesn't have fun when I do it. Hmm. So page seven at the very top. One, two, three, fourth sentence down. Yep. Page seven. Page seven, fourth sentence down. It says. Uh, Delios reminded the commission of DHCD. Uh, commission. Type of this. Oh, yeah. Any other comments on 5 7? Um, just the paragraph about page 6, the last paragraph there. When we first discussed these, I think you guys said the intent was kind of a little different than how we wrote it, so I just want to make sure that that language in there is how you mean it. Um, um, talking about historic districts. I don't see any issue with that word. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Move that the CPDC approve the minutes uh, for the meeting of uh, May 7th, 2018, as amended. Second. All in favor? June 11th. We have a couple of type, uh, a couple yep. of. First one on page two. Change the word handicap to handicapped. PPED. Mm. And on page four. Second paragraph. Yeah, the second sentence. Second, well, it's, it's really the first sentence. And it Sorry, currently terrible. reads, uh, Mr. McNichol said Danvers added the residential transitional frontage zone to their zoning map, which may require town meeting approval if, and we need to add in Reading. After the word approval, right. yeah, you should also right. change what made a wood because that absolutely would require a town meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Further down, it says wood. Okay. okay. But you can okay. change it there as well. That's it. So those are our edits on that one. CBDC approve the minutes for the meeting of June 11th, 2018, as amended. Second. second. All in favor? We're on a roll. 7 9, <laughs> other than the sort of back end <laughs> computer glitch. Yep, yeah. more wing ding. Well, uh, is seven, that valid text or is it? It's the list of order? documents related to the meeting. Yeah. For some reason, it's kind of getting copied that way. Okay. It's getting PDF that way. On the on the bottom of the first page, uh, we continued the meeting to August thirteenth. Oh. Not not. <laughs> All right. And 
on page 13. Um, the second paragraph says, Mr. McNick confirmed the property is in the last one, or is the last one. Strike the, the first in. It's on the boundary of the district. CPDC approved the, minute, the minutes for the meeting of July 9th, 2018, as amended. Second. All in favor. I have a follow-up question, however. On the Perfectos Cafe, we said there are a number of things that we were watching, like the plants not being watered. They are now. But the plants being watered and the uh, brick wall not being fixed and being a danger. Was there any follow-up action that was that our incumbent upon them to come back and say it's fixed? Or is it our responsibility to make sure that they have it? I believe we wrote it up as a condition, so it should be fixed. It will have to send the building inspector out for review or myself or Julie um, yeah. in the near future to ensure, but it was a condition written. So Discussion of master plan, master plan potential updates. You said you want to wait till almost eight thirty for the other stuff. Yeah, I emailed John. Um, uh, how did we have the master plan? What is that link? Um, I have a And then Cam had sent an article. Um, a couple weeks ago. Well, it would have been last week. Last week. Great. Right. 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 Unfortunately, it's going to make me set up a little bit too. Oh, okay. Um, it was on the APA website. Yeah, yeah. it was. Oh, that was relative to the special consideration of Boston for putting a new development in. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah. I didn't right. even know we were being, the Boston was being considered for it. It wouldn't have been that big of a bump, but it would have been close at hand. It would have been mm -hmm. Hanscom Field, mm -hmm. 400 more people. No.
was in the actual email. Yeah. Okay. Did you guys look at the link that Andrew provided in the email? With the, it was like in the Google Drive. Um, the email about the Google Drive also had another link to a policy document on master plan. Mm -hmm. I see that it should. Um, there was below the fold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, maybe we can. discussion at a different meeting and give you guys a chance to look at it if you want. In that link that had the uh, there's only one link In to the, the email, Google Drive. One link. The last one? No, like go to the email he sent you. Which email? The one that with the has Google the Drive Google link. Drive link. It also the email it had a second the link. Second I have one from August 9th. Is that the email you're referring that to? That should be it. There is no second there link no in that link. email. Okay. And we must have just done the full yeah, page, I don't have which that. I cannot access without okay. um, Do you want me to go get the? If you think we I'll need it. I mean, I don't know that it's going to be helpful to the discussion if no one's had a chance to yeah. look at it. And Andrew, I'd go through the web web mail. I wouldn't bother setting up Outlook on there. Yeah. yeah. Don't. I wouldn't even bother. No. Yeah. Honestly. Um, it was mostly a review of design more. Actually, it seemed like more than master planning That's true. work. Um, it did go over design review and guidelines, but um, for the most part, I don't think it was too relevant to what we had to do. Um, I didn't get a chance to go all in depth with the 100 pages or whatever it was, but... Um, that was actually the July 2nd email. I just found it. What was it? Was that where the link was? Sure. I don't think That was the only Google was. link that I've gotten. Um, yeah. But the talks we had about the master plan were pretty prelim right now, so um, I'm not sure exactly where we're heading on them yet but we think we need like we said we've broken it down into parts and we've done a lot of updates in the past few years with the housing protection plan and the economic development so um, last we talked we all thought that the master plan still seemed pretty relevant so I guess if we want to decide where we're kind of heading from here with it and these discussions but was there a specific reason that this item ended up still on the agenda? I believe it came up at the select board meeting okay. first. Well, which one of the members talked about wanting to discuss sort of the master plan, mm -hmm. but not... But not just, like, right. Yeah, I mean, just sort of threw it out there as a select board goal to work with mm -hmm. CPDC on that. But, nothing specific yeah so i think that was kind of what we said too we're just kind of throwing it out there to kind of be ready for mm -hmm. what could be the next wave of development and make sure that we have exactly what we want so how do you guys feel about undertaking a master planning effort mm. i believe it's under your jurisdiction right but under Without using a consultant or with using a consultant? I'd be curious about your feedback either way. I guess I'm always disappointed in the consultant process. I don't know that we get anything better than couldn't be developed by a you know, a local group, volunteer group. On on items like this, right? Because these are sort of broad broad statements that are based on some sort of planning, right, planning uh, guidelines. If we were talking about zoning or some sort of more legal wording, maybe you get a consultant in there. But why couldn't we just look at the master plan and see what might be outdated, what needs to be updated, and then which of the general themes are still relevant? Because a lot of them still are. We could still cite them right now. So maybe it's more, maybe the task is really to go through the master plan and see what needs to be updated. I would feel comfortable with yeah. that. I haven't not looked at it before. 
Right, and then if there's something in there that needs a change in direction, then that's probably one of the first priorities. Like we can't, we absolutely cannot, you know, support any more development here or there, or you know, it should be geared towards that, that kind of thing. But what force would that the master plan have over zoning? If you say I don't want to have development over here, but zoning allows it. Does the master plan prohibit it, or is it more of a case of, well, if we say no, we can refer to the master plan when we eventually get sued? No, no, no. 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 It's really neither. So the master plan would be like a guiding principle. So mm -hmm. then, if you wanted, if you if you wanted to say we don't want any more development in this area, then you would need to actually revise the zoning, and, and that the justification at town meeting for revising the zoning could be because we went through this master planning process and the community agreed we don't want development any more development here. So, so for example, let's just say you know we were successful the downtown 40 yard district is built up and we're now getting to the tipping point we could potentially just say okay we're changing the zoning from that so now but create a down a 40 yard smart growth district south main street i'm speaking about mm -hmm. and so now that will encourage the development that way is that so where you're I'm not well, being specific like that, well, but, but, yeah. Just, but so. yeah, I mean, the master plan would just sort of be an overarching guiding document for the town's goals and visions and values, um, and then there would need to be like specific actions taken in zoning to. So if we update the master plan, those. step two is then to enact the changes legislatively through zoning, through right. whatever else, Could be. to meet right. those now new goals. Right. Right. right, but if it's more of a principle, so you could even look at the principles that, that um, Gene put together here, right? Active and open civic space, for example, as a goal. If, if, if the master plan had a, an item like that in it, does you could use that as your guide when you're reviewing an application mm -hmm. does this application provide something in line with what the master plan wants or is it completely against that like is somebody mm -hmm. you know paving a lot to put parking in mm -hmm. does that really help the master plan right mm -hmm. goals but the master plan isn't it doesn't enable you guys to like prohibit something unless it's also prohibited in zoning Okay. Yeah. If the plan made a good enough case, then we would bring that to town meeting and find some way to uh, legislate it, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there is stuff going around, or the boundaries, if you will, of, of Reading that is likely to affect us, you know, in, in the not so different, distant future. I think I've heard discussion at the um, MAPC about the trans or a, uh, transit connection from New Boston Road over to the regional uh, transportation center, Anderson RTRTC, which would change the character or the access, if you will, substantially over in, in Woburn, just the other side of the highway. And we have, if we considered at some point the uh, whatever our exit number is, the, the dual ramps that run over to uh, Target. If, the, if there was a connection to Reading from there, that would change substantially the uh, access. Um, and we've got the industrial area, which is currently behind RMLD, which may get enlivened if we go ahead and do the regional uh, DPW facility over at Camp Curtis Guild. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's some areas, there's some substantial changes that we might want to do some forward looking at. I think areas like New Crossing Road where labeled as PDAs in the master plan, priority mm -hmm. development Economic area, development plan. Um, yeah. we are talking about a potential feasibility study over in that area to see and hold workshops with residents to see what the town would want there and what the possibilities are. Um, yeah. So again, that's a little prelim, but the discussions have started about preparing for that area as the next wave. Did you mention the grant you applied for? We did apply for a grant, housing choice grant. Um, we applied for 50000 to 
use that money towards this feasibility study of this area and help with design guideline review mm -hmm. again. It's a good um, move. So. Is that for those priority development areas? Or for the just new housing areas. Yeah, specifically yeah, that area. Because we're a housing choice community, we can apply for grants. Yeah. So I don't know if that will entail expanding the 40R into that area, um, creating new zoning to allow um, mixed use or anything along the lines. So. I have a question. Has a, has a town ever done, let's say, create a 40 R overlay and then voted to discontinue it? Has a town done yeah. that or have we done that? I, well, I guess I. I mean, I don't think we have. But has it. Has but, a, and I don't know the answer to whether it's whether that's happened for you or it's relatively new. Did we take the, we took the mixed use off the books, right? Yeah, that's. That's a little different. Like, I'm sure DHCD would have to get involved if we were to discontinue a state statutory zoning district. Well, it necessarily would be a change to the zoning map, so yes. all of right. those procedures and, and so forth would, would kick in. Yeah, just with a regular zoning. There's a lot of benefits to the 40 yard. I mean, we could, yeah, I mean, if you're interested in knowing if any town has ever done that, we can ask DHCV. Yeah. No, the reason why I asked it is that, you know, we created to, to, to sort of spur the kinds of things that we wanted, but at a certain point, there's a tipping point where now it's like, well, we want to discourage it right? or maybe direct it somewhere else. And, and I'm just curious if, if anyone's ever had that. Because our 40 yard district is relatively small. Um, and, and no, both of them. Uh, we have two. Remember. Well, I'm talking specifically about the down, you know, the one in downtown. 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 Yeah. And it's you know it's creating the kinds of things that wasn't that were envisioned. But at a certain point, you know, when does it become? When does it overburden? And, and, and how would you? I mean, how would you? Right. That, that, that's, I don't know that any other development wouldn't add as much burden and you wouldn't have any control over it. So the way zoning works is that there's this downtown business B zoning that's in place somebody could take advantage of. Which they, they could do on their own. They could do commercial, uh, four stories. 40Bs can still go in there. 40Bs can go anywhere. No, it's just, yeah, just uh, it but You have more control with your 40R. You have more control of what you... No, I'm not advocating. I'm just, I'm just sort of suggesting, you know, a, at what point does the town have a discussion about, okay, it's like, you know, we declare victory and go home? <laughs> well, you know, we've, we've granted waivers to developments that were providing more benefit than, than were detrimental, right? But as we get towards what you're calling the tipping point, meeting those criteria is going to be more difficult. So if somebody comes in and says, well, I only want to provide one parking space per, you know, and we're like, no, absolutely not. No. There's no waiver granted for that. Or I don't want to provide any uh, commercial on the first floor or it's, it's an office in the retail or something. Mm -hmm. right. We just get stricter with what we're allowed to do. Or require more studies of yeah. infrastructure and parking yeah. and traffic. Traffic's going to work like further that. and further on yeah. mm -hmm. studies. So that's how you can control it. Yeah. So just yeah. get rid of it. So that was master planning. <laughs> well, it's worth looking at it. So it is. So Send me a link. Let's look at it. You get that it. grant for those list. PDAs. Um, that's a good start. That yes. might help guide what we're trying to do, anyway. I, right? so, I think so, actually. And that I think, like, we want the design guidelines kind of ready beforehand mm -hmm. before anything mm -hmm. like that is done. So I think if, if if you get that grant, then I think the focus shifts towards preparing for whatever that's going to mean. So like you said, getting the guidelines ready for that. What's the time when you find out? I'm not sure if they didn't give us what we submitted it July 30th, so hoping sometime in the fall we get word of that. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not a competitive or not really. Um, there was only about 30 housing choice communities and 
I don't know if all of them applied or not, but you could apply up to 500,000, I think, or 250,000, and we only asked for 50, so. Based on a quote, an estimate we got yeah. from a consultant, mm -hmm. um, or I should say we, I didn't, I was not here for this. Capital. Andrew did the work. <laughs> um, cool. But I think if we don't get it this year, we can apply again next year. Yep, so if you don't get it this year, you can apply again next year, and we would have much more time to, of course, like prepare for that, because we kind of... They gave you like a month to do it, and so we just kind of got everything together as fast as we could and met with them and had a pre prelim discussion, so good. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, from what I've, you know, just scuttlebutt, if you will, from the NSPC and the MAPC, Reading has a, a good rep. Mm -hmm. you know, we, uh, there's a lot of, of nearby towns that look to us for uh, doing a good job. Notwithstanding things like trees in the woods. That's a unique animal. Okay. Should we jump into 40 hour real quick? Yeah. We started to talk about this document we have here with these guiding principles and how we thought that this was a good way to apply these throughout the guidelines. Right. So they're up front and they um, they can be applied to any of the individual sections. Right. Is this a proposed wording for this? Uh, for this, for these principles, what we see here. Did you compare it to the Danvers? I haven't gotten the chance. A lot of it is directly from the Danvers. Um, like we already mentioned before, abrupt transitions in building height, such as locating a four-story building immediately adjacent to a one-story building on the same side is discouraged, which we had down here at the bottom. Um, so I think it could use some amending just to specifically more fit our needs. Mm -hmm. um, mm One of the things in the, the guiding principles document that I'm not sure I understand, per se, is that like 610, smart growth and sustainable development. I'm, I've never quite been sure what sustainable development is, how that uh, applies in, in this particular context. I mean, it may be a, a building code thing that I'm just not that familiar with. But it's maybe a term we don't necessarily no, use. Term. No, so sustainable is just meeting the needs of today without co compromising the needs of the future. Um, so creating things that will last and developments that will be built for the future, whether it's including bike paths or walk paths to increase the activity of the downtown, um, mm -hmm. sustainable features such as solar. We don't require lead requirements. I think obviously we're favorable towards them, but some towns in their guidelines ask the developments to be silver, gold um, developments. So yeah, Boston does that. City of Boston does that, but I, I don't really like this language, actually, where it says highly favor lead and lead neighborhood, unless we're going to add some more in here, because mm -hmm. lead is a money-making institution, mm -hmm. which yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a lead accredited professional, but I don't push it on anyone. <laughs> so, I mean, we could add in here passive house, we could add in here energy star, you know, some, uh, what's the uh, development on? 
windows. Uh, uh, 14 2? Chapman. Yeah, what are they doing? Uh, townhomes and just high energy efficient um, building envelope. Yeah, but they had some term for that. I believe they Did had they? Um, zero net. Oh, net. Yeah, net zero. zero. So I think we should add a few more rating yeah. systems in here. Passive house, energy star, net zero, or whatever the proper term is for that. Right. Those are all pretty good things. Passive house, if you can meet that, that's, that's actually a real uh, a real energy saving mm -hmm. system. But yeah, I think it would have to be favored but not required. We want to make sure we don't right. push developers away. Right, right. And a lot um, of times people will want, uh, a client will just come and say, give me some sustainable strategies. And so you look at things like daylighting, and it's free, really, daylighting and uh, energy right. conservation and water conservation, because you're going to put water-saving fixtures in anyways. So encourage that sort of strategy thinking as opposed to maybe getting the plaque. Mm -hmm. Right. We started to look at some low impact development techniques for some of the curb curbing, remember, and roadside things. We talked about reducing the, the width of the, mm -hmm. of the roadways right. and some of the developments and coming up with um, better ways to manage all that storm water. Yeah. Talked about updating the subdivision regulations as well. Something that's still on my list. Which can incorporate a number of those, the waivers that we continually grant. Yeah. Um, because that's the regulations a, are outdated. And yeah. That's probably a good thing to put on our list of to-do uh, to list. Yeah, it's on the list. Um, okay. You should talk to Gene about it since I'm back now. Yeah, we should. We should really isolate the important things for fire and safety, right? Mm -hmm. And then maybe come up with a graphic that shows what those differences are. And see if we can't get some public input on that. Right. You're talking like specifically about subdivision. Right. Yeah, when you overlay those two roadways yeah. versus some of the waivers we've granted, you can see that there's so much less built environment, you know, it's much more green and much less paving. Right, and right. A lot, when you pave less, you have more green, you can do more LID stormwater. Yes. It's just better all around. Right. Yep. right. You don't have the Houston problem. Houston is almost all asphalt, and there's no way for the rainwater right. to get down through this. Right, to infiltrate. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yep. Uh, on uh, six six active and open civic space, it sounds it, it sounds here like we're trying to promote um, public oriented open spaces. But I'm just kind of going back through my mind to the forty yard projects that were in this district, you know, from the post office to you know, Gould Street. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Sunoco, I, I don't recall any um, sort of open, you know, the development either enhanced the open space that we already had or created some. And, um, you know, I think this is, I think this is, a, this is good to sort of add, you know, to add, but I, I don't think we did it with any you know, unless I'm missing something. Um, well, it, it's something that we haven't had the, context to do it with the, the comparatively small uh, acreage developments that we've, we, that we've been dealing with. The, I mean, the most recent one is probably the, the, the downtown, uh, the entire downtown uh, red and green and, and so forth is where we created the downtown area. Uh, with the parking areas and the, the pressed concrete parking and uh, I've forgotten what we called the development when we when we did that. Oh, when we did the downtown. Yeah, but that's that's falls into this category more than anything that, that, which is uh, like the Sunoco station. There's no opportunity there really. We haven't created open spaces or places to congregate on any of right. these, either for grass or for. Yeah, Park but it's it's going to be more of an issue maybe with the Lakeview Ave, uh, 40B or something. I don't. I mean, 
So this isn't specifically for the full year guidelines. Or this is more just for the, the district as a whole. Okay. Yeah. These yeah. actually, these are, these design guidelines are for the four year district. Right. I mean, so, you know, maybe, I mean, I agree, these are, these are small parcels, and maybe as you go in here, it encourages sort of parcels to get accumulated and aggregated, maybe there's more of an opportunity. But it's still not a bad idea, even if someone has a small parcel, to get them to think about, okay, just don't think about what you're doing on your, on your acre, right? Mm -hmm. How is your acre going to basically relate to the rest of it? And, you know, maybe it's, there's not, maybe there's not room on their, you know, on their parcel to do some kind of an open space thing, but as a way to kind of contribute to something that's already ongoing, whether they do a bench somewhere, something, right? Get them to, I mean, put it on them to think about what they're going to contribute. And I think a lot of developments have done this. You have to read this where it says increase in private and publicly oriented open spaces. So. The first Haven C project has a, a strip of storefront, and some of it had outdoor seating. Who's that? Sorry, what? The, the 36 Haven? The first Haven Street. Oh, yeah. yeah. First, our first yeah. building, right? Yeah. That was all supposed to be retail, and it was for a while. And some of those, the restaurant there had some outdoor seating. Yeah. And so that's engaging the outdoor space. That's creating this public, it's privately owned, obviously, but it's still a public engagement. And the same thing with. School Street Project will have a, a commercial piece that has the potential for outdoor seating. The post office has that whole pedestal that, that will have some sort of activity going on there. And yes, it might belong to the restaurant, so, but there's still an engagement there. You see this activity and that livens the place up. And they've got that courtyard around the back, which is theirs. Right. But again, when you're walking past it, you're not looking at a garage. Well, I remember the discussion on that with the post office. And, and, sort of, and I think I might have even asked the question. Because I haven't thought about this. And so, you know, do you envision opening that up, you know, to kind of some type of a, a public use? And I think they said no. And I agree um, with them. It's, okay. it's, it's their property, and, and um, yeah. it's not that large a space. It's an amenity for the users. But again, when you're walking past it, there's an activity going on. And so it's not just a dead face. It's not, you know, yeah. a parking garage like some of the developments are being forced down our throat. Yeah. I believe yeah, they we've, did we've say that the public could use it, that little courtyard off Sanborn Street, but then there was a big discussion about like who would actually, because it, it, it feels private, like who would actually know that they could use it, and, and practically speaking, like it's probably not going to be used by the public, mm -hmm. even though. Right. Well, we've, we've got the uh, Biltmore and Maine with their outdoor seating area. And the other one up at uh, Bunratty. Bunratty's, uh, where we've been encouraging that, kind of thing, even though it's it's seasonally constrained because we're in New England. We had the issue down on Haven Street where the they wanted to do uh, instead of three parking places, they wanted to put in some tables or something between the the what used to be the butcher shop and the next building down. I mean, that one didn't work out, but I mean, it's something that when the opportunity is vaguely present, we try to take advantage. Well, I mean, it, 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 it's sort of like, okay, it's on, we're coming on, I mean, we're saying this is a, this is valuable. This is something yeah. that we need to encourage. You get them to come up with a solution. Maybe, you know, down the road, there's two or three of these projects that are on the way that they can work together to, Pocket park, a little, you know, something. Or the time they tried to put the whole, the, activate the roof over the Venetian moon. <laughs> they tried I mean, to I put think it's, I mean, I think it's yeah. good to have that in there because, like I said, none of these projects really, you know, they're not the other than sort of some after scene. I don't recall them being engaged. We don't have a lot of space. Well, that's part of it. <laughs> okay, so we, we like the approach. I think these are good principles. We can read through them and figure out if there's any language we want to tweak. What else in the actual guideline? 
what do you have? But um, I glanced through it, and there were a lot of comments still, a lot yeah. of questions. Right. Just getting a little. Oh, you, does it have all the formatting too? Yeah, usually you turn the formatting off. It's easier to see just like what the comments are. And your show markup, just uncheck formatting. Cool. Yeah. District Edge, we talked about that, right? Did we, did we capture some language from the... Uh, I don't know if we what we've thought about and continued with those residential frontage zones that we got from Danvers. Um, and it was part of the zoning map, so I don't know how we could incorporate it without going that route, if we can at all. Um, but it was a good idea that they had to identify street segments to scale back density and height within that area. But I think we also kind of go over that in the compact development and human scale section as well. So what is the goal behind the residential frontage zone? So their goal was to limit overwhelming development. And do they mean where it abuts any kind of residential or actual residential district? They created a seg street segment or two specifically yeah. to their downtown to limit uh, development against. So like we could do like type of that big green street and even yeah, and they're, if I remember correctly, we looked at those streets and they were pretty run down. Yeah. Yeah, we, well, that was one of the first conversations we had. Yeah, they had no edges. Like, they didn't have a feel like they had an edge. Right. The street just sort of bled up to the buildings, and the buildings were crushed and hashed and low. So it had a lot of potential. Mm -hmm. mm. I thought um, one of our conversations before I left was that we don't actually really necessarily want to draw lines or create zones. We want to be really careful for the fact that the district's evolving. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. didn't we say we could write language that said um, when a property, when right. a property like abuts, this, when a property is across the street from this, yeah, yeah, kind of so that those kind of things, right? And that will be like responsive to the ever changing nature of the downtown, right? And if we came up with several of those. If we walked around and you looked at each of the streets, or if you had a condition in mind specifically, and you said, and we, could, we could list them all and see how many were actually common, how many discrete ones there were. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe there aren't as many as we think. Maybe it's maybe it's a handful of really good ones. Or maybe it's two dozen. Right. Because you know, there's just so much going on down there. And we'd have to prioritize. Sounds like we just keep adding to what we're trying to do, right? We're really getting, yeah, right. Getting it done. <clears throat> so I think we'd better start. And we're only getting feedback from like a few people. Well, squeaky wheel. Not that I don't get all. Right. <laughs> I just mean maybe pick up other people to them. Dave, Tony. <laughs> It's just, it's hard to find time right now. I know. Really I know. Really so, 
So I think we better take that <coughs> marked up copy and, and start accepting some of those changes. Same. I think we can narrow down. Do we have to, uh, when in the process do we have to have a public hearing? Probably once it's a little bit riper. Oh, and what is the process? Is it design guidelines? Do we have to go in front of town meeting? No. No. But we, we, we have to, D yeah, DHC has to approve them. We have to have a public hearing. Just here. Okay. CBDC. We want some input. Yeah. Have to have some input rather than after the fact, people come in screaming at us. I can't believe you could do a four story building in downtown. Right, exactly. So we try well, to the, notice that. Have a, have yeah. A, the, and the, and the trick is getting um, feedback from more of the town. Right. Than That's always the trick. But unfortunately, more of the town doesn't care. That's right. Unless, it, unless it's a higher tax rate or something like that, they don't care. It's the immediate neighborhoods around this area that care. Right. They care more. But I can tell you just from my inbox, there's a lot of letters that we got about yeah. some of the, as we were sort of, go, as you guys were going through some of these projects, from people who didn't live in those neighborhoods, who just said, you know, well, I should say most of them were not complimentary. So, about just sort of the, the character of the town and the change of the town. So, I agree, um, you know, if you're living next door to that, you probably care more, but it, it, it's a town wide kind of discussion. Mm -hmm. Well, this impacts a lot of people in town because when you put up an additional 40 or 50 units, all of a sudden there's less parking. So when I want to go downtown, I can't find a spot anymore. And, and that's, that was a chunk of the comments. Was, yeah. But not all. No. There, there are some people who are concerned about the entire town, but you'll find that a lot of people do not get involved unless they have to. They don't want, they'd love to be involved, they just don't know what the process is and it frightens them. Hmm. Frightens me from time to time. <laughs> okay. Well, we've got work to do. There's we can't keep staring at that marked up document. Right. Yeah. So. Would it help you guys to actually have hard copies of it? Like if we printed them and mailed them to you? No, I could print my own. You don't have to print mine. So the next step is what? To so. kind of take these comments, bring them into a document, note it as the changes? Yeah, I think we need to work at that document to get it to I guess if there's anything you can get into the guiding principles, then certainly do that. Um, but if there's anything specific to a section, then... Mm. Yes, there's a month until the next meeting. Is it possible that we could go through the document from Jean and the document, the design guidelines with the edits and just really think about it? This one's easy, I think. It's the, right. it's the guidelines it's the other one documents that's, that's really yeah. yeah. Principles are good. Um. So, so let's just say, you know, in two weeks, somebody comes to the town hall and some of the parcel they want to do a 40-yard project. Mm -hmm. um, the guidelines have, you know, they're sort of in a draft form. Do, what do we give them? The, do we give them sort of like an overall kind of? These guidelines exist already. They were adopted right, in 2009. 2009. Right. We give them those. We give them those. Yeah. Even though they're sort of. They're in pro. Yeah, because we haven't adopted a change to them yet. We yeah. still have a lot of leeway with those yeah. existing guidelines. Right. We did no, use. I mean, I mean, you negotiated what for projects? Right, and we've learned from all of those, and right. we can point to those. And, and I've said a million times already that the effects are accumulative, and the next person in has more to do. Exactly. Well, you didn't let, you, you, you let that guy do this, but... Should have gotten a line before. <laughs> There's no such thing as precedent with zoning. Nope. Not with this, anyways. Especially with this. My only regret is, while well, you've approved four, we haven't seen any of them in life. Nothing's been finalized yet. Well, There's a big hole at Lincoln Street. We're getting yeah. there. We're getting there, I know. Well, and that's not a 40-yard. That's true. But Post Park hasn't started yet. 
Uh, they're in the process of yeah, building a permit. And, uh, and didn't uh, uh, Gould Street get, get some they got funding. Good financing? They got funding. Mm -hmm. like through, yeah. the, through yeah. the state, right? Yep. yep. Yeah. They got yeah, the, the housing bill, didn't they? Included in the housing bill, yeah. Obviously, just a number of projects. Mm -hmm. and the Sunoco station has changed, re replaced the uh, gas pumps with a pile of rocks. Yeah, they moved the rocks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they took my park, they go for full parking from Professor's Market. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, well, the Reading, uh, whatever, Reading Village is moving along the 40, 40 B. Yeah, that one is. And they're doing work on the uh, 40 B next to St. Agnes. Yep. Right. Yeah. The, little, yeah. Whose name? I, the name of that one. Schoolhouse, Schoolhouse, Schoolhouse Common. Yeah. Not to be confused with Schoolhouse Condos, which is also under construction. Is yeah. That yeah. That's, that's the old yeah. 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 That's that's the big one. It's complicated. If people with, who are living there who had things in certain condition, they have to build back to, and then they're also allowing people to specify new things that they want and pay for upgrades. And, well, it's complicated. Mm. How many units are there? Forty. It's not habitable right now. No. So it was a condo association that had to negotiate with the... Uh, and the management company, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, do we know more about the Lakeview Ave situation? Or? The next zoning board meeting is on September 5th, and there's okay. another like workshop tomorrow. All right. yep. Is that with the developer? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And traffic peer reviewing. They really scaled it down. Mm -hmm. The second iteration of that was really scaled down and redesigned. So from 120 to maybe 86. 86, mm -hmm. yep. The yep. street side got the place instead of the big bulky building that's 12 townhouses for sale. Mm -hmm. as to yeah. on. So it kind of builds up as you go through it. Right. So it's, I mean, really, it's so much better. I think so too. It's got in a really good direction. Okay. Less screaming. <laughs> well, we'll find out. Less screaming? <laughs> I refuse to answer the grounds may tend to occur maybe. It's been a pretty good process. I expect process, you to keep so an eye on that one and let me look through a little bit in detail. I mean, that's sort of the model. Like, that. Yeah. Um, um, you've done a great job. Good process. Yeah. But, um, it might be the developer. Is it the fact that we actually have a little more leverage because of where we stand without? Yeah, I think that helps. Yeah, that that helps. helps. Yeah. Yeah. There's many factors contributing to this. The neighborhood's really um, good group of they're good. professionals. Yeah, their comments are really on point. Um, All right. Anything else? No. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Thanks.